Victor Frankenstein created his monster by combining the limbs and organs of human corpses. In real life, we have limited success with organ transplants. They're dependent upon the availability of the donor and are often rejected by the recipient's immune system. It would be great if there was some way to create entirely new organs from scratch that were totally compatible with our bodies, but that's just wishful thinking. Technology like that is decades in the future and certainly not available right now. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I don't have any ethical issues with creating and raising thousands of clones solely for the purpose of organ harvesting, like they do in the movies The Island and Never Let Me Go. My problems are mostly logistical. It takes a lot of money to feed an adult clone, and once they realize they're clones, they start asking a lot of annoying questions like, who am I, and why can't I keep my organs? Eventually, they try to kill you and then take your place, and you have to create a decoy clone that your organ harvesting clone can kill instead of you, and then it, it just gets really confusing. It would be a whole lot easier if we could make the organ and not have to deal with the rest of the person. I'm sure that's what Robert Langer and Joseph Ficante were thinking in 1997 when they grew a human ear on the back of a mouse. A lot of people got freaked out by this at the time because they thought the mouse had been genetically modified to grow the ear from itself. In reality, it was simpler than that. Langer and Vicante created a biodegradable scaffolding that could be molded into a particular shape, in this case, a human ear. Then the scaffolding was seeded with cartilage cells taken from a cow. Now, when an ear or any organ grows in the natural world, it doesn't do so in a petri dish. It does it as part of a greater organism. That organism provides the burgeoning body part with the nutrients it needs and removes the waste that's created. To provide their ear with nutrient enrichment and a waste removal method, they embedded their scaffolding onto the back of a mouse whose immune system had been repressed so it wouldn't reject the cartilage cells. As time went on, the scaffolding dissolved, leaving only the cartilage cells. When the ear was fully grown, it was removed from the mouse, leaving the mouse physically unharmed, though in need of years of therapy. Many years have passed since that first ear has grown and tissue engineering has come a long way. Scientists are now able to grow organs from an individual's own cells, making organ rejection a moot point. And instead of seeding the scaffolding with cells by hand, scientists now use 3D bioprinters to print out bones, bladders, and even hearts. Instead of putting powders or resins in their printers, they're filling their cartridges with living cells. And in addition to attaching an external organ to a carrier organism like the mouse, we now have bioreactors which simulate the environment of an internal organ. Right now, skin created this way has been approved by the FDA and is being used to treat burn victims. There are people walking around with tissue engineered bladders inside them. You can't get one of these because they're still in the trial stages, but scientists are getting better at creating simpler organs and starting to create more complex ones like hearts and livers. They've created these for mice and rats already. At some point, the parts of our body may be as interchangeable as the parts of a car, and our organs will no longer set the limit for our lifespans. We may be able to print out our bodies the same way Tony Stark generates his newest Iron Man armor. But even if tissue engineering could replace 90% of our body, it still wouldn't be able to transfer our thoughts and memories from our original brain into a new one. In order for us to achieve mental as well as physical immortality, we're going to have to explore some other methods in the upcoming episodes of this five-part series on real immortality. Excuse me, real immortality. Thanks for watching. And if you're looking to live forever, subscribe for more episodes, check out some of these other immortality videos, and let me know what superpower you want.